Alrighty guys, it looks like we have the pre-release campaign for the next event that's going to be coming to the JP side of things. And I know you guys are not able to read the kanji for this and might not know what this event is going to entail, but do not worry, your boys got you covered. This event is going to be revolving around the characters of Urotaros and Princess Odahime, at least that's what it looks like. I've translated it myself, and then I've also uh, gone to people that can actually speak the language, and it does look like it's going to be the event revolving around them. If you have no idea who those characters are, I don't blame you. I also don't have the greatest idea of who these characters are. I know the princess is the daughter of a dragon king, and Urataros is a fisherman and has something to do with a turtle. And most of my knowledge actually comes from Kamen Rider Deno. So shout out if you've seen that show. Uh, he's the blue guy. So... Yeah, this is going to be the pre-release for that event, and I suspect this is going to be the last event that we have before JP gets their anniversary, so it does make it a little bit uh, dicey as to whether or not I do want to summon on this banner, because hey, even knowing this guy from, you know, Kamen Rider Deno, I really do still like his character in the show, so I kind of want to summon for him off of that, and I mean, considering that... Kentoki over here is also like, you know, his name is King Toros. That's another character from Deno that's wildly popular. You know, when they gave him his free to play version, they made him a rider, right? As like a little bit of a reference, which I'm hoping that maybe they'll do that for King Toros as well. But again, this is right before anniversary. And I mean, the anniversary units are always absolute bangers. So not sure if I want to summon on this one. So we'll see about that. But let's kind of unwrap everything that we got over here in this uh, maintenance that really came out of nowhere. But first, I want to go ahead and talk about the Nero buff that went ahead and dropped. I could have done like a separate video on this thing, but I don't know. I just didn't feel like it was necessary to have it be like its own video. And they did kind of drop at the same time. Now, again, I know that nobody is able to actually read this, but don't worry. Your boy's got the translations. This is kind of nutty. So it took her three guts that she had that were like on a five turn cooldown and it made them a six turn like they last for six turns which is pretty nuts and then anytime her guts are procced she gets a um 20 np damage buff as well as getting a 50 np gain buff and then she also pretty much does the ozymandias thing where she's able to give herself buff success rate so she now guarantees her imperial privilege a lot of very good things for nero over there i mean having three guts that last for six turns on a 10 turn cooldown is not bad when you're also guaranteeing you know like i think it's a 44 percent defensive buff that's going to make her pretty tanky you're nearly cutting in half the damage she's going to be taking and seeing as you're probably going to be using her against you know lancer bosses or whatever that's not too bad and i mean her base damage is pretty nice now i mean sure you still want to be on water side to guarantee the arts buff and you do want to get say one of those guts procs because they're building up damage but I could maybe see Drake, not Draco, but Nero being pretty good uh, in like some solo capacity because this is a pretty nasty buff that they were able to toss her away. So again, I know it's the meme of, well, look forward to it in two years when we get this on the NA side of things, but this will be really nice and I'll definitely be doing some testing with it myself and uh, maybe I'll put out a video for Draco if I do think it's like as crazy as I think it's going to be. But yeah, it's a very, very nice buff for Nero. But now, Moving into everything else that we're getting in this pre-release campaign, not a whole, whole lot. I mean, it's not bad, obviously, right? Like, we're getting some really good login bonus things. Uh, we're not getting a rare mana prism, which we usually kind of get for some of these things. I was kind of expecting them to toss those out, especially because the, the rare mana prism shop is getting quite large. You know, it would be nice to have some extra rare mana prisms running around. But, you know, getting a decent chunk of QP, getting an apple is going to be very nice. And then getting a couple of Saint Courts will be cool. I'm curious to see if they're going to bring back the mechanic because this is kind of in the slot of the Bakken event last year and this should be coming out after they do this big fix for FGO or whatever it is they're doing I'm again I'm not much of a programmer so I can't go into too much detail but that's what it seems like they're doing I'm going to be curious to see if it's going to have like quirky mechanics or something or if the servants will have some new weird mechanics because of that or if it's just going to make the game run a lot smoother which uh, hopefully it is the latter, you know, <laughs> well, maybe overlays it's both actually, but we have some of the event bonus servants that we're going to be getting. Uh, Kiyo, he may make note of that one because it's looking like she's going to be the one to get the costume, as we'll see when we get to the very bottom of this page. But they did mention that it is a costume for a pre-existing servant, and the costume does have a lady, what appears to be holding a fan, so I don't know, has a little bit of a resemblance to Kiyohime. I mean, these are obviously all of the, um, 
the guys are going to be event bonus, uh, which is pretty nice. I mean, like having people like Emmy and like Kentucky available is just going to make the farming portion a bit easier. A waiver is really funny. If you want to use DPS waiver, I guess that's <laughs> that's a thing you could do. Uh, but Murasaki, say, Da Vinci Rider, like these are also some like just kind of nice units that you'll be able to use to farm the event. So that's always going to be very fun. And then this is looking like all of their um, interludes. Actually, before I let me let me let me double check real quick because it looks like all of their interludes. Like, come on, after you stop with the pops, stop with the pop ups, man. Come on, <laughs> stop with all this, all right? Yeah, okay, it, that, it is what it looked like. I thought I thought I was correct, but I wanted to double check first. So yeah, all of their interludes are open because I don't own any of these servants. So uh, it's really nice that they're all going to be available. And it looks like they're all half AP. Is the Nero one also half AP? No, okay, because. She's not related to this. I just thought maybe they toss us a bone there, make it half AP. But so yeah, you'll be able to go ahead and read all of their interludes, which, you know, even, you know, if you don't have like a translator app or anything, right? <laughs> It'll still be a good chunk of Saint course that you'll be able to get, uh, as well as it might help you out with your missions uh, in getting, you know, the uh, every 10 times you do an interlude or whatever, you get 10 Saint courts, right? So that'll be really good for that. Uh, then obviously this looks like their rank ups are also going to be half off. So if you want to get them beefed up for the event, that's going to be a thing friend point i'm assuming what this is is the thing where like the event bonus servants give you bonus friend points if you like bring them or use them you know for like your friends or whatever so that's that's cool uh, i'm not exactly sure what this is i'm assuming they get like bonus bond or something like outside the event i don't i don't know what this is actually uh let me hold on i'll be right back let me go translate this Okay, my assumption was correct. They get 20% bonus bond during this pre-release period before the event. So if you want to bond up your Kentokis, your Says, your Waivers, whatever have you, you'll be able to get some bonus bond for them. So that's kind of nice. And then obviously here's the super success rate thing where if you want to level them up, you know, you got that available to you. And then yeah, here is the uh, costume for the server. Yeah, okay, they have the full body. So as you can kind of see, it does look kind of like Kiyohime, right? And it's not going to be the new servant because again it's like it's somewhere in here where they say that it's going to be a costume for a servant that we already have so assuming it's going to be kiyohime i can kind of see it if it is going to be a uh, princess odahime because i think kiyohime is also a princess correct me if i'm wrong and that's you know the whole like achin lovers spat thing which i think I'm, I'm not entirely sure with the story but when my friend was trying to explain it to me i i think that's kind of what's going on between urotaros and the princess in this story as well so maybe there might be some kind of like syncretism with like oh they're both princesses and they both have this lover person which is really <laughs> i mean kind of generic i think i don't i don't know if that's enough to really give them syncretism but you know what like whatever pop off i believe they're both um they're both japanese as well so maybe that's like further syncretism it's like well it's not just they're any princesses they're japanese princesses so Maybe that's why they're giving Kiyohime a costume. I mean, I don't know who else it could be. I mean, they're, they're pretty small. <laughs> like, Kiyohime's a small lady. And, and, I mean, the only other person that was in the, like, the poster for the event servants was Da Vinci Rider, who's also kind of small. But, for one, I don't think she's that small. And, two, this does not look anything like Da Vinci Rider. This would be a very strange costume for Da Vinci Rider to get. Let me just say. But for Kiyohime, this does seem like it would be in line with her to be able to get. Then again, some characters have the most weird costumes. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the new event that's gotten announced. There's not a whole lot else. Again, expect us to drop on the third. And obviously when those new servants come out, your boy will be out there to get that coverage for you guys. So yeah, be looking forward to that. But as for now, if you're playing JP, it's still the Draco event. But I mean, it's, it's kind of nice. You know, they're giving us, you know, a really, really strong Nero buff, which I'm definitely very appreciative. I mean, everything that's been going on for this rerun was... An absolute banger i mean the skahawk buff was really good this nero buff is really good maybe we can get like one more buff or something maybe they could sneak one more in but we'll see we'll see we'll see if they decide to do that but with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day and i'll catch you guys on the flippity floppity